P. P is for positive aspect of equality or development positive values and moral society. Just in fair environment and people understand importance of quality in workplace, general life, competition, gender-based attraction, etc. Negative perspective of equality is that its practice, practice requires effort and moral. Engagement. As young people, we have the power to contribute to the prevention of outrageous crimes that are happening in our world and the promotion of universal human rights. And we can use this power by engaging in the formation and implementation of action plans to prevent violent extremism. We are not only citizens, but also citizens who can be crucial agents of change. We need to make the world a better place for everyone where crimes and violence could happen. A for awareness. For today's generation, youth have become more open-minded with everything. The juvenility became more aware of its surroundings, issues, and concerns. Awareness has its requisite role in certifying the power of youth. Stating the idea that the youngsters became more cognizant in this generation, safety is one of the main concerns of today's tripling. Awareness could promote the safety and security of everyone. It will help us to be more conscious of our environment. If the youth became more aware, it could lead us to have a safety and friendly environment where people and youngsters would, won't be afraid of witnessing or experiencing heinous crimes because no one deserved it. See, we're capable. We are capable of doing anything we want to do. We are more stronger than we know, and we can endure much more than we think we can. Capable has the ability and power to promote peace and prevent crimes. Peace starts within ourselves. When we have inner peace, we can be at peace at those people around us. With that, we can inspire others by being capable of doing great things. With capability, everyone has the ability, everyone has the power to promote peace or safety for our environment. E for equality. Whether we like it or not, our society is never fair. Justice isn't always served and it just keeps going through generations. Equality isn't just about men and women's power or the different ages because it's more than that. There is gender, education, jobs, a place to call home, the problem of poverty, different skin color, different nationalities, different countries and culture, and a lot more that only a few knows. If we really want to acquire and achieve equality, we should begin now before it's too late, because it will disappear as time passes if we stay this way. What about the future generations? How much worse is their time will be than ours? It can be twice, five times, or ten times worse than our society today. Do we really want to destroy their future? We all have the potential, responsibility, and capability to change everything. So we should really start now and gain our equality and peaceful world for a better future. Not only for us, but for the future generations as well. That's all. Um, thank you.
Good day, Rizalians. Today, we are celebrating the United Nations Day 2021 with the theme, Tradition of Peace and Non-Violence. You are right, Hannah. We will be reminded once again about the importance of having diversity and appreciate it. Since it is United Nations program, what is your dream country, Hannah, or the country that you have always wanted to visit? Mm. I really want to go to Canada because I admire their great reputation worldwide for having a low crime rate and a clean surrounding. Also, Canadians are polite and easy to talk to. As they said, I think it's a good place to reflect. How about you, Darius? What is that you have always wanted to go to? For me, it is Japan. Many things about them caught my eye, but one of the best things that really got me attention is their way of giving respect and eating manner. Unlike Filipinos, Japanese allow themselves to eat with a loud sound as, for them, it shows enjoyment of the food. The number of different cultures and beliefs is truly overwhelming. With that, we need to learn that these have meanings that might be different from us. Again, we would like to greet everyone with a pleasant day. I am Gracian Hannah Coletta of H12D. And I am Darius M. Villafranca of H12C. We are your Masters of Ceremony. To formally start our event, may we request everyone to put your right hand on your left chest as we sing the Philippine National Anthem, followed by a doxology from the Laang Rizalian.
Now, to welcome everyone for today's event, let us hear a word from Mr. Romel C. Navarro, the principal of the Senior High School Division. To our Senior High School Department Chairs, Teachers, Resource Person, Parents, my dear students, a pleasant day to all of you. I am very glad for this opportunity to be part of today's UNDA program, for it brings back our school practice of remembering the importance of United Nations in our midst. For quite some time now, since our senior high school program has been created, the program for UN Day celebration has been temporarily put aside to prioritize the academic operations of the division. I am happy that today, with our LSS team headed by Mangarisa and Daria, they were able to resurrect this program and this time in the senior high school division. One of the UN Day celebration themes that was considered for today's program is the traditions of peace and nonviolence, a theme that is very timely with our current situation. I hope you will value, my dear students, the important information that our invited resource person will be sharing today and use it as a valuable lesson and a reminder to always choose peace in all your dealings in life. So sit back, learn, and reflect as our dear resource persons share valuable information on our UN Day topic this afternoon. To our LSS team, our LSS department chair, Ma'am Carissa Enteria, and all the student clubs and organizations who conceptualized today's UN Day program, thank you and congratulations for making our UN Day celebration meaningful Thank you and good day. Thank you, Mr. Navarro, for the message you gave. Let us give him a round of applause. Before we listen to a wonderful topic, let us first dance and sing as we watch the intermission number presented by HG Club. Yay, yay, yay! HG Club is in the house!
vacation It's what it's all about That was a wonderful performance, CHG Club. You truly wake up everyone here today. It is now time for our main event. We would like to call Ms. Leilani Gaykanya, a social science teacher under the Languages and Social Science Department, to introduce to us our speaker. Good afternoon. It is with much pleasure to introduce to you our resource person for the Senior High School Division's Celebration of the United Nations 2021. As a graduate of international studies with a major in international politics and a minor in peace studies, our speaker is a youth peace advocate who is currently working in Miriam College Center for Peace Education on a variety of issues including disarmament, interfaith harmony, peace education and youth, peace and security. She is a member of Box Christi Filipinas a member organization of Pax Christi International, a global Catholic peace movement, and a part of the management committee of Generation Peace Youth Network, a group of organizations and individuals engaging youth-led advocacy towards a just and sustainable peace. As outside work, she spent her time traveling and hiking that was before the quarantine but still watches k-dramas and plays with her dog and three cats let us all welcome miss carissa hi everyone welcome to our session for today um happy UN day and i'm really really excited to uh, share with you um 
for that for today youth promoting peace and non-violence i hope you're also um feeling well and excited for our talk all right so let's start so outside of the discussion um so these are the things that we'll talk about um in the session first we'll talk about what is peace and some cultural traditions and faith and spiritual traditions on as resources of peace we'll also talk about what is non-violence I'm going to answer the question, why choose peace over violence? We also talk about why should the youth participate in promoting peace? And of course, how can the youth promote peace in their online classes and through social media? So, what is peace? Um, take a moment to reflect on what you think about peace, the words that you relate to peace. When you hear the word peace, what are the words that you relate with, you know, your connotation of peace? You can share it in the chat box if you want, or you can just keep it to yourself. That's perfectly fine. Now, here are some words that are uh, usually um, usually connotated with um, peace, or words that usually used to describe peace. Um, some of the answers, some of the words were are positivity. Stability, serene, balance, love, comfort, shelter, equality. Also, have you no know, conflict, the presence of justice, order, having freedom, mutual understanding, contentment. Someone shared family and food, faith, goodwill, nature, silence and harmony, kindness, presence of um, calmness, tranquility. Humor words like relaxed, beautiful, quiet, safety, respect, like anything. Um, and other words that you might have shared in, in the chat box. So let's look at some cultural traditions on, on peace. Um, these are different languages and the peace words in, in this in the la- in these languages. So first let's look at kapayapaan. Kapayapaan is the Tagalog word for peace. And for us, we usually connote kapayapaan to kapihinikan or kapiwayasan. Panahon na walang gulo, away, alitan, or dimaan. So it's the presence of kapihinikan like um, tranquility, kapiwayasan as it comes, orderliness, and the absence of conflict, of, of war. When we look at Arabic language, we have salam and shalom for Hebrew. Now, for Hebrew and Shalom, uh, it embraces the absence of war, but also the presence of well-being, of wholeness, and harmony with oneself and um, between individuals, within a community, and among nations. Um, Shalom actually also means love, um, full health, prosperity, and the importance of the distribution of goods and reconciliation. Now, when we look at um, the, in- the Indian language Sanskrit, we have Shanti. Now, for Shanti, it implies um, spiritual contentment, but also peace of mind, as well as peace of the earth and the universe. For the Greek language, uh, we have the word Irene, and Irene implies harmony and justice, as well as the absence of physical violence. So, looking at this selected a translation of lack of peace into different languages. We see some differences on how we describe peace, but also we see similarities between the cultures. Now let's look at some of our faith and traditional uh, faith and spiritual traditions. So for Christianity, we have peace and earth. This is something that we always see in the Bible. There's a verse that goes like, Glory to God in the highest and upon the earth, peace. The rejection of violence is also a very a powerful teaching of Jesus in the Bible, as well as love, the importance of love and reconciliation rather than retaliation. When we want to talk about Islam. Islam is, is what they call, uh, some Muslims call it the, uh, the religion of peace because Islam comes from the root word sim. I'm not sure if pronouncing that correctly, but it's the root word and the, the root word of Islam. And it means peace with God in other human beings. There's a lot of peace teachings in, in Islam. Along with this is the importance of compassion, compassion for other beings, and tolerant, tolerant um, to those who've hurt us and to those who might have uh, done us harm. 
um, we also have Buddhism. And Buddhism highlights um, the importance of inner peace, uh, rejecting or rather letting go of greed, of desire, of anger. It also highlights the importance of having compassion and loving kindness um, to each other. And the importance of cherishing all living things, all human form, I mean, rather life forms, all life forms. When we look at Hinduism, uh, it's similar to Buddhism, uh, the respect for all life forms, uh, the importance, the recognition of our interconnectedness, and um, the importance of unity and harmony. It also practices ahimsa. It's a big part of its teachings. Ahimsa meaning non-violence against um, human beings and all life forms. Um, one practice of Hinduism is ending their prayers with the word shanti uh, by repeating it um, three times. Um, so when they say shanti, 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 uh, it means that there be peace within us, in our family, and in the world. When we look at in indigenous traditions, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, in the whole world, but they do have similarities uh, in how um, they look at peace. And one of which or, uh, is the sacredness of life and nature. And it's something that we can see very evident, even in just in the Philippines, the, the value of life and nature on how our land is sacred. Now, other values would be forgiveness and reconciliation. They, 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 they highlight the importance of forgiving, but not just forgiving, but but trying to rebuild the relationship that was harmed from an action done against. So the, the, the value of forgiveness and rebuilding the relationship, the reconciliation. Now, let's look at the secular and holistic view of peace. For quite some, for a long time, the secular view of peace is something related to war, the absence of war, the absence of conflict. That's how people traditionally look at peace. But as, 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 as people reflected on what they want peace to be, they, they realized that it's not just the absence of, of violence, but it's also the presence of certain conditions that promote well-being in just relationships. And that's where, that's where the holistic view of peace came from. Johan Galtung, um, a peace um, builder, defined peace uh, into two, negative peace and um, positive peace. So negative peace is basically the absence of direct or in physical, direct or physical uh, violence, while positive peace is the presence of conditions, of conditions that allow us to foster well-being in just relationships. Uh, in different areas, social, ecological, political, economic. So let's look at negative peace first. Um, under negative peace, we have here direct violence. Uh, and direct violence would be war, torture, abusive child and women. And this is uh, what we call direct violence. What we see, what we can easily see uh, in, our, in our society. On the other hand, we have um, positive peace, and under that would be three forms of um, violence. First, we have structural violence that would include poverty, hunger. Uh, these are forms of violence that are not easily seen in our society, but rather requires for us to look at the, the society as a whole, the structure on how it's to the people. We also have social cultural violence in uh, this would include racism, sexism, religious intolerance, and this is and this is something uh, that we see that we see in, in in our society in our everyday interaction. These are the forms of violence that came from our interaction and how we treat each other uh, in our society. For ecological violence, it is violence that we direct towards um, our environment, nature. That would include pollution, overconsumption, um, destroying, destroying um, our land, our sea, killing our animals, and yes. 
Now, what is nonviolence? Um, nonviolence is um, a very essential uh, value in, in peace. It is two things. It's, it, we can define it or describe it uh, two things. First is the recognition of the sacredness of life. So it's the refusal to do harm or to other humans. This life is sacred and it's an absolute value. And second, it's the rejection of violence. Uh, it's the preference for non-violent processes, such as collaborative problem solving, and other positive techniques against the use of physical forms in weapons. So non-violence uh, asks of us to recognize the sacredness of life and also reject the use of violence in, in our society in a way in, for us to achieve our goals. Um, we can also define nonviolence as a principle and a way of life. You know, it's, it's a tool for change that considers the person, human person, as the highest created value which must not be destroyed. And a big part of nonviolence is, is it, its aim to seek the truth and create, uh, give justice, give justice. And possibly solidarity, create solidarity and reconciliation between parties involved. Now, given all that, um, why choose peace and nonviolence? First, we, as we've learned, our cultural, our faith, and special traditions teach us about respect for life. And peace, peace is about respecting life. It also, um, choosing peace is also the practical choice because violence is very costly. Um, war is very expensive. Military development is very expensive. And not just when we use them. When we use them, violence takes lives, kill, our, kill, kill whole generations, destroy our environment. It takes away so much from us. But even without going into war, the mere production of arms, of weapons, is already costing us. It's costing us millions in money, millions of funds that could have been used for social services, for better education, for better infrastructure, for healthcare, especially right now during a pandemic. And so violence really, the, the option for violence, the mere construction of weapons for violence, is really costing us. So really, it's not a practical choice at all. Um, second is that non-violence, you know, peace and non-violence works. We have a dozen of examples all around the world on how non-violence works um, in creating positive social change. And let's not look so far. Let's just look in the Philippines. In the Philippines, we have um, People power one and two. We were able to topple governments. Rather, we were able to peacefully remove governments through nonviolence. When when the Filipino people rallied, um, carrying groceries, rather um, flowers and grocery, and people power one and people power two. And that's nonviolence. That's nonviolence in action. And so really. Um, uh, there's, really, there's really no argument to choose violence, you know. Um, it's always peace. Because both our, 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 our faith, our culture, as well as our history tells us that um, but violence is not the answer, but peace is the answer. When we choose violence, we create, we destroy relationships, you know, war destroys relationships. We cause injustice to people. It, it creates a lot of negative things in our society. And so really the cause of war is just not worth it at all for whatever every goal that we may have you know the cause of violence is just too much and so really there's 
I mean, the, the way for peace is never violence, but rather it's always peace and non-violence. Um, I want to share with you this quotation from Thich Nhat Hanh to highlight the point of choosing uh, peace over violence. It is my conviction that there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Um, to take a moment to let that echo and sink in. As, as, as what I've been discussing, um, we all want peace. You know, the reality is we all want peace. Who doesn't want peace? Um, but the only way to peace is through peaceful means as well. You know, peace is the way to peace. Peace and nonviolence is the only way we can create long, lasting peace and from time and time and again um history has taught us that and i hope that's something that we can embrace in our even in our daily life you know if, if we want to achieve something let's always choose the peaceful way to do it because that's the way that we can truly achieve um what we want without hurting people without breaking, without destroying relationships and at the same time creating a more peaceful life for ourselves and for our society in general. All right, now why did you, uh, why did you should promote peace and non-violence? Um, in the Philippines, under the Philippine law, the, the youth sector are, is everyone or all Filipinos between 15 to 30 years old. And based on our population estimate, one out of four Filipinos is part of the youth sector. That is 25%. That's a big chunk of our population uh, being part of the youth sector. So why should the youth participate? First, you have the right. We have the right to participate. And second, we have the capacity to be drivers of positive change. Um, second, we have a powerful voice given the numbers that I showed you earlier. The youth has a very powerful voice. And this voice is essential in creating a more peaceful society. I mean, just think about it. How can you create a peaceful society if one if one fourth one fourth of the people is not part of that conversation? So it's really really important for the youth's voice to be there to be part of that conversation to create a more peaceful society. The third is that we provide the youth provides unique experiences. Um, the youth has new perspectives and challenges that need, that needs to be understood, that need to be understood and responded to. Our experiences, the youth experiences, especially now, you having to uh, go through the pandemic and study full time online. This is our, there's our very unique experiences. I, I did not experience it. It's your generation's experience. Um, and so these are very unique perspectives. You have to carry very unique experiences and perspectives, and at the same time, challenges. And so it is essential that your stories and narratives are heard and that they are responded to. Because it's only when, because the only way we can respond to it is by learning about it, and the only way we can learn about it is when you participate, when you talk about it. And so it's essential, it's essential for us to create a holistic, uh, inclusive, peaceful society to really include the youth, to really have the youth as part of nation building, of promoting a peaceful society. And of course, fourth, um, is it fosters wellness, you know, personal wellness. Um, when you participate, um, it creates meaningful relationships. You create meaningful relationships between each other and the different um, generations in, in the country. 
um, it also fosters self-awareness because through your participation, you will learn about who you are, your values, what you like. Um, it also fosters social skills. You develop your skills and knowledge in in different areas, and you learn how to, to relate more to people, to understand more people. So this for our some simple points, our main some simple points that that that's why it's very important for the youth to to be to participate. Um, so how can how can the youth promote peace and nonviolence? Um, I've highlighted how important your role is um, in promoting peace in, in society, peace and nonviolence in our society. But how can we do that? How can the youth promote peace and nonviolence? So let me share with you eight um, tips on how we can do that. Even during um, a pandemic, and being in a quarantine. Um, all right, so the first one is practice active listening. Um, especially now uh, that, you're, that you're in an online classroom setting, it's very, very important for us to practice active listening um, because it's even harder for us to, to grasp things through a screen. And now more than ever, it's yeah, it's very vital for us to, to listen, for us to be able to communicate, uh, to understand each other. So how can we do that? First, practice uh, being present and giving full attention to the conversation, to the class discussion. Um, minimize distractions as much as possible. Uh, avoid interruptions, when, especially when you're in classes. Uh, this would help you to, to focus and to learn and listen um, much easily. It's also important to be patient and to withhold judgment. You know, be patient um, with yourself and to the person you're listening. Be patient that even if you f- that when you find yourself um, floating away, maybe getting sleepy or daydreaming, you go back. You go back to the conversation, and you also withhold judgment. Um, you, you don't stop listening midway and think of an answer or response to the discussion. You withhold the judgment and you listen fully to the, to the person. Um, of course, also reflect and clarify and ask a few questions. And that is part of, of, of active listening. And of course, lastly, respond and share your thoughts. When, when you've clarified, when you've reflected on on the sharing, on the person, on the sharing of the person who's talked, you respond and you share your thoughts. And that's all part of active listening. And that's really um, essential, you know, active listening in, in promoting um, a peaceful relationship and in, in creating and fostering understanding. All right, second, um, foster kindness and empathy. And it's important for us to acknowledge that we all have our own challenges. And especially now, um, communication is harder because we're doing it online. We don't have body language. Sometimes we get interruptions um, and all sorts of you know of challenges with online communication. So it's it's really important for us to be kind. Uh, and to try to be empathetic to whatever challenges the other person is experiencing. On the other side of that screen, um, let's withhold judgment as I shared earlier in practicing um, active listening. Try to be more understanding. Like for example, when when you're working on group works, and sometimes and maybe you might feel that someone is not working as hard as you are, perhaps they're doing their best you know and that's the best that they can do at the moment so be kind you know ask question and by being kind and trying to be empathetic um you can avoid misunderstanding and conflict and create better relationship between classmates between you and your teachers um 
and even in your family, you know, you try to foster kindness and empathy online and offline. Um, number three, respect differences. Um, acceptance is a very important part of, of peace, of promoting peace. And when we respect differences, we, we recognize our uniqueness, uh, the uniqueness of each one of us, and we find ways to understand each other and work together. Um, we also recognize that, that our differences um, does not mean that we can't work together, but rather our differences um, makes us stronger. These are our strengths that allows us to contribute different things. You know, when you work on a group project, um, you're different. You, you, you're all different people in the group, and you all have your own different ways of contributing, of perspectives that you can contribute. Um, it's the same when when you're when you're in social media. You know. People, you will find people who are different from you, might have different opinions, different ways of doing these values. And it's important for us to respect that, that and recognize that the differences does not mean that um, we can't work with each other, we can't interact. Realize that these are human beings and sometimes and sometimes social media, um, it makes it very easy to box people because sometimes you can only see one part of their life. But sometimes, but it's not, but that's not really the, the whole picture. It's not really the complete picture. And when we respect differences, we, we, we realize that, um, that perhaps the differences that we see here online, perhaps, that's not the only thing that they have. Perhaps they have also other things that might be similar to you and that, that you can work on. Number four, uh, be selective of what you consume. Um, managing your, your feed, your social media feed is one of your social media responsibilities. So be in control of it. You know, uh, learn to discern from fake so make sure so make sure that um the things that you're consuming are from real um institutions reliable reliable um resources um create a positive online space um for you meaning um stay in control of who you follow and the pages you like Make sure that your platforms are inspiring you, you know, are uplifting. Don't free to unfollow people or maybe even block or report people if they make you uncomfortable. It's important for us to recognize um, unhealthy accounts and unfollow them so that we can keep a positive, healthy online space for ourselves. And if necessary, you will know, spend less time on the app if it stops being something that is um, healthy for you. Number five, um, filter what you share. Um, the internet is a public space. Um, so make sure that um, you know who can see your your, share, your posts, your photos, your videos about you. you Make sure that you set your privacy setting in the setting that you're comfortable with. Um, because once you post it there, um, it's probably it's gonna be there forever. Even if you deleted someone, could have could take a screen, could have taken a screenshot, a screenshot of it. So filter what you share. You know, ask yourself a few questions, think twice before posting. Um, perhaps you can, the first question is, is it true? And if it's not true, then you should not be posting it. No, you should report if it's from a, a resource, a reliable resource. Um, another question you can ask yourself is, what is the purpose of your sharing? You know, um, does it inspire? Does it 
helps people? Is it helpful or hurtful? Um, so reflect on that, and when you've at, maybe, and when you've answered that, then maybe you can decide whether you should share something or not. Number six is um, have a community. Uh, this is very important, especially now that we're not that we don't see each other face to face. So sometimes it can be very isolating. So one way of of making of making sure that we're not isolated and that we create a positive environment around us is to have a community. Um, have a healthy community. So one way of doing that could be having, um, having a study group. Um, you can video call with some of your friends if that's possible, and then you can learn together. And perhaps it would help you study even better. Um, you can also join clubs and organizations in um, hobbies that, that you enjoy, interests that you enjoy. Or you can even look for communities online, you know, on Facebook and other platforms. Of hobbies that, that you like to do, like planting or drawing or any other interest that you have. Um, and this and that's why and the reason why this is um, a way that we can promote these is that when we create healthy communities that that allows us to promote peace at the same time, we create harmony in our communities. We create unity and understanding, and that is essential in promoting these um, online. Number seven, of course, use your space for peace. I encourage you to advocate for issues that are important to you, um, regardless of the topic. You know, peace is practically all encompassing. You can advocate for the environment, for gender equality for different social issues, um, whatever feels close to your heart is what I would suggest that you advocate for. Um, and through advocating about it, people will, will know about it. You will raise awareness on these issues and in the long run, create positive change in, in our society. And lastly, number eight, um, take time to disconnect and recharge. Um, as much as I, as much as we encourage, um, so as I encourage you to promote these um, to others online, it's also important for us to promote peace um, in ourselves, promote personal peace. And when we're doing that is to taking time to disconnect and recharge. And this also will help you in um, fostering a healthy online, um, healthy online presence. So one way of doing that is by giving yourself um, gadget breaks. So like if you've been in front of your laptop or your phone for for a couple of hours, you know, take a minute to step out, um, rest your eyes because you will be heard from staring for a long time at the screen. Um, look at this guy, you know, or cuddle your pets, you know, do something that um, will give you a break. Or even just simply sitting and closing your eyes, this is perfectly fine. Now, if you can't disconnect because you still have to attend your class, or then just make sure that you hydrate and that you eat well, um, that you have water and snacks beside you. So that you don't get hungry while while having online glasses. And that's one way that you can get charged even if you're not disconnected. And of course, um, make sure to stretch and move around. Um, being in an online um, classroom setting really took away a lot of physical movement, physical activity for, for students. Um, you don't get to, to travel to and from school. You don't get to walk around the hallways, around the campus, go to the cafeteria. Um, and you're just practically in one position for, for hours. It's bad for your, for, for your health. 
So make sure to stretch, make sure to move around. Um, because when you do that, you're fostering um, your, your well-being. And you're also promoting happy hormones too. Happy hormones in, in your body, which in turn would give you um, some more energy and foster your own personal peace and well-being. So allow me to end um, with these words from Mother Teresa. She, sh- she said, um, peace begins with a smile. Um, I talk about so many things, but if there's one thing that I want you to remember, this would be it. Peace begins with a smile. Um, the way the youth can promote peace is by, by giving people a smile, by smiling for yourself, um, finding peace is this point. It's hard to do negative things. It hurts. You can. You cannot practically do. Not feel. It's hard to feel negative feelings rather um, when you smile. At least the authentic smile. You know, if the smile, the smiling simply is something positive that you can do for yourself and for other people. And so smile. You know, because peace begins with a smile. So that's it. Um, thank you so much, and uh, hope you learned something from our dis- from my talk for today. Thank you. Thank you for giving us a wonderful discussion, Mom Carissa Sichua. It was truly filled with valuable lessons and inspiration to always choose peace instead of violence. To express our gratitude, may we call Ms. Carissa M. Enteria, the Department Chair of Languages and Social Sciences Department, to present the certificate. Good afternoon. On behalf of our senior high school principal, Mr. Romel C. Navarro, it is with much pleasure that I present to you this certificate of appreciation to our webinar speaker. Let me read. Jose Rizal University Senior High School Division Languages and Social Sciences Department present the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Carissa C. Chua for her invaluable contribution in giving an enlightening and insightful talk as a guest speaker in the program webinar of the Senior High School's United Nations Day Celebration 2021 with the theme, Traditions of Peace and Nonviolence. Given this 26th day of October 2021 via live stream on Jose Rizal University official Facebook page. Signed, Mr. Romel C. Navarro, Principal Senior High School Division. Once again, thank you so much to my katukayo, Ms. Carissa Chua. We hope to see you again in our future webinars. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Enteria. At this point, it seems like we are about to end, but not so fast. There is still something that you guys must see. Yes, Darius, we still have something up our sleeves for resilience. With the collaboration of everyone who work hard to produce an informative film for everyone, let us waste no time and watch the presentation they created for us. We need to talk about anti-Asian hate. We need to talk about anti-Asian hate. We need to talk about the anti-Asian hate. We need to talk about anti-Asian hate. The occurring hate and racial discrimination against Asian Americans have been dated back to more than 800 years ago, where Asians were discriminated and were deprived of civil rights. The never-ending fight to end anti-Asian hate persists even during the pandemic. And it's even worse this time. I strongly believe that there's a psychology behind racism. Humans are not born with racial categories in mind. Therefore, they are real. I believe that being informed about these issues should be discussed in our society. In order to help people realize that discriminating against others causes fear, anxiety, and non-peaceful environment. Stop Asia.
as students, what did the film speak about peace and nonviolence? As individuals, everything matters, and we should treat them equally, giving them a chance and supporting their independence in all circumstances. Reflecting on the lessons and reminders shown in the film, it simply, it simply states that history is an experience and a reminder that it should be not repeated otherwise. Let us be educated more on the things that really matter like peaceful and non-violent actions towards conflict we face in this present time. Furthermore, no one should be treated unequally because of their skin color, nationality, or physical characteristics. Respect is a gift from God, and it cannot be earned. Regardless of who we are, or where we came from, we are all human. Because after all, we are all human beings, and our skin color does not define us. Therefore, people's rights should not be divided based on the race, and we must not go within the flow of the discrimination, instead stand firm against it. What do you think? What do you think is the impact of the film towards aspects of culture and beliefs? Watch the film and stand your point. The latest missile attacks on hospitals and schools in rebel-held areas that left up to 50 civilians dead. Guns go in order. If a government wants this, it will cause conflict, leading to a severe misunderstanding and resulting in war. Any threat or act of terrorism over a certain state or a certain community will further influence and impact aforementioned to a different extent. As we are all aware with the different terroristic attacks that happen in Syria between the Syrian government, Russia, ISIS, and civilians, it differs a wide array of economic, domestic, and international activities. Families are dying. People are dying. And and even if they're not dead, they're in constant fear of dying and by resulting in this conflict. The things I just mentioned can be stopped. Knowing that thousands of lives decimated through years of conflict, I still believe that as long as entities involved will continue to wage war and deny the importance of international solidarity, the odds of achieving true peace will never be in favor. As a senior high school student residing in Metro Manila, where war and bloodshed are not evident in our everyday lives, I somehow thought of a lot of things. One of which is that I realized how lucky we are that we could go to bed, sleep, and sound peacefully without the fear of getting bombed anytime soon. That we children have the privilege to enjoy our childhood by playing with our friends or toys, and most significantly, we do not have the constant anxiety of getting separated from our family in a dystopian era from other foreigners. When watching the film itself, I felt war's emotions simultaneously. Sadness, happiness, empathy, and pity. I still can't believe parts of the world are still currently experiencing violent armed disputes. I am most saddened by how all of these affect children, especially the younger ones. The worst scenario that these kids will experience is getting separated from people they trust. They cannot look for them or even protect themselves from all the danger. They are just kids, still powerless and prone to the harm of adults. Once they get divided from their loved ones, it is impossible to know whether these people are still alive and breathing or have been long dead and cold. Thankfully, a person like Kamal Hussein exists in a place like this. When I saw how much he cared for his children, I gained hope. Witnessing his determination to help his fellow refugees felt so heartwarming. Despite not earning much cash from doing this, he still keeps on assisting his people. I am glad that thanks to him, 700 plus children were brought back to their families. Did you know that about a million of people are taking refuge in a particular country and are now considered the largest refugees ever in the world? This story is the so-called Rohingya refugee crisis. The Rohingya crisis started when the government of Myanmar persecuted the Rohingya people because of the long ban of violence and discrimination against the enemy. People who lived there were struggling and in haste to survive this event. We saw that in the process of surviving, they sometimes forget their responsibilities, especially being a parent. One by one, the people and their family were separated from each other, leaving thousands of helpless children that have died, disappeared, and lost. 
What more for those stutters that got separated from their families, roaming around a strange area full of people they do not know, and all they see is mayhem, confusion, and people running and screaming. Fortunately, this event was brought up to attention by a man named Kamal. Kamal is one of the refugees that dedicated his work to reunite separated families. This little act of kindness by Mr. Kamal is one of the things that helped better the conditions of the refugees' affected families. The world is a cruel place, and we need more people like him who can help save many lives, even if he has little power in his hands. Be kind, because each person has their own struggles. A historical and ongoing kind of humanitarian crisis, not only in Myanmar, but also all across the world. We therefore need to wake up and recognize this issue before it gets worse, and be labeled as a global crisis. We can be the voice of you to reach leaders who can help and do what's best for the people. In line with this, we should not tolerate any form of discrimination, whether it is about religion, color, gender, nationality, whatever it is, it should not exist. Thus, we, us, everyone, as part of the same society, should promote the exact opposite of discrimination by being a role model. A role model in having the values of equality, non-discriminatory perception, and observable justice for all. Regardless of the label we possess, remember that an act of kindness can change someone's lifetime and it's never too insignificant to help anyone with little things. According to a study by Brian Lees and Kite, for years, people from the LGBTQIA community have undergone discrimination due to the society enforced sex and gender conflating notion that a person can only identify as a man or a woman and nothing else. This oppressive idea sparked the burning passion of equality believers, heterosexuals, queer, and non-binary alike to fight for the rights of those suffering under it. There are a lot of kids here, and if we catch you with a homosexual, the rest of your life will be a living hell. And you will be caught. Don't think you won't be caught. As stated in a paper by Hegarty and Ruther Ford, the centuries of continuous homophobic acts of violence and prejudice towards the people of the LGBTQIA+, especially from the government, invoked a series of spontaneous demonstrations by the members of the gay community in 1969. This movement, also known as the Stonewall Riots, opened the gateway to Pride Marches, an annual event celebrating diverse gender identities and promoting self-acceptance. On June 30, 2016, the Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte was sworn into office. He introduced a policy to tackle drug abuse in the country by giving police wide-ranging powers to kill any suspected drug addicts or dealers. This policy has been extended until 2022. According to Carlos Conde, happy family is gone. This is because children or family member witnessing their parents or siblings die during the drug raid can cause them a trauma. Even they did not witness in their own eyes, this has also had effect on them. I will agree with what Carlos Conde said. Family who have lost their loved one can suffer from physiological distress, economic hardship due to loss of breadwinner in their family, and they will feel that they had lost some part of themselves. We need to stop the drug war because there are other innocent people dying and their families could be affected by losing their loved ones. Even drug addicts did not deserve to die because they deserve a second chance. The way they execute their plan is just very wrong because they can just easily paint anyone as a drug user and... Bloody, horrific, and unsuccessful. It is a clear violation of human rights. Our on drug is a failure in the Philippines. 
violence, the killings, abusing, murder, violence, are more than to lessen our drug users. It's nothing but oppression and abuse to the people, especially to those in the silver lining. Violent and blood. It is also traumatizing not just to the family involved and affected, but also to all the citizens in the Philippines. A lot of innocent bystanders during police operations get killed and or assaulted. Drugs are a public concern in the Philippines. President Duterte's warnings about the dangers of it were logical. However, addiction is a sickness that is difficult to avoid but can be treated. It is a result from a succession of terrible decisions but ultimately the result of environmental factors and social instability. The current administration's so-called war on drugs has always been a ploy. Camouflage is a crisis, calling for the prosecution of our fellow citizens who are victims of the disease of addiction. In the heat of battle, ethics become distorted, and it is one attempt to clear their conscience while killing the victim rather than the disease, to kill the life rather than the condition. Declaring it a war implies that there is no other option except to load guns and pull triggers to cross names of lists. Labeling it a war generates the war we all despise, the war we have been conditioned to horrify, the war that celebrates the unjustified killings of our families, neighbors, friends, or classmates. Now, we can all say that it is not a war anymore. As Angelica Sinai of Rappler PH said, how can it be called a war when the vast majority of its victims are the poorest of the poor, the defenseless, not the drug lords? How can it be called a war when these victims' homes are raided at night just as they are about to sleep when they are most vulnerable? How can it be called a war when only one side has a gun and the other is forced to run? When loyalists argue on social media platforms about how Marcos is the best president ever, they blithely leave out the fact that his greatness was established on a shaky debt-driven foundation, which his family benefited from so much, cemented with the censorship of the media he controlled through his army, and adorned with the blood of the citizens who opposed him and his regime. Siding with that family despite the atrocities that they have committed goes beyond simple political support. It is also telling of one's morality. Historical revisionism is indeed the ploy exploited by the Marcuses in their attempt to crawl back into power. But while we didn't leave during that period of time, there are already plenty of source materials to reveal that this was not a time of gold. With an exemption to the gold, their family managed to steal. Throughout the name of those who were silenced and brutally murdered, we shall never forget. We must not allow history to repeat itself. Never forget, never again. In today's world where fear and violence have become the prominent issues in the society and its institutions, the word peace is the first thing we seek to aspire in order to escape from this harsh reality. The breadwinner film showed us how a brave young girl named Pervana used her knowledge and imagination for strength and resilience amidst the presence of ignorance and intolerance in the different institutions of the society. She taught us how we could use the power of love and compassion in achieving unity and peace in the midst of adversity where raucous voices spread terror and oppression. When will we stop allowing fear and violence to take control over our lives and our rights as individuals. Race. Your words. Not your voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. 
those indeed deserve a round of applause. You can see the effort they put in every second of the presentation. Next up is another performance of Aria Salia. I am sure everyone can relate to what we are about to witness. Without any further ado, let us hear a spoken poetry with the title, I am blinded by a truth. From the second place winner in spoken poetry competition during the celebration of the International Day of Peace, conducted by Yes Philippines UNESCO Club, Ahmed O. Ramadan of H12B. I am blinded by the truth. By Ahmed Benzasad O. Ramadan. 7 a.m. I wake up for the first class. The flow of water rushes down my sink, time ticking on the clock as I blink. I do not know what the day has ahead for me, but I know this. People in my neighborhood comparing themselves. People in position finding themselves in crimes that they say, I don't know anything about this. People on the streets asking for help, but the only help that has reached them is the air. Air that we breathe that is slowly now fading away with the smoke of greed people has lost mr humanity how have we come to this point how have we created this unfamiliar way of life how can we live day and night without the conscience of having peace with the person right next to you the pain of not having a peace of mind that while i sit here listening to my first class across the globe thousands and millions of people suffering of not having a choice of wealth. Peace. What is peace? Do you know peace? Is peace something that you deserve? Is peace just a word that we say just as it is? Every day, these thoughts devour me to the point that I can understand such questions that are boggling my mind for countless hours of sorrow. They say the truth will set you free. But what truth will that be? The truth that you only want to hear or the truth that you need to hear? What is the truth? You see, I am blind, but not literally blind. I am blinded by the truth. I am cursed to see that there is hope in each and every one of us. I am blessed to know that there is a chance for us to regain humanity that was just before a dream of utopia. I was blessed with a curse that I have the power to change the world with just two words. Have peace. Have peace with yourself, as you are the only companion that you will have from the beginning till the end of your time. Have peace with the people you love, as time is limited with the moments you have with them. Have peace with the people around you, your community, as maybe one day they will return the favor. Have peace. There are billions of people around the world having the power that connects us all in ways that the past could not even imagine. Maybe this is the time for us to stand for peace and for hope. I stand today and speak as a youth that will lead us to the better, the better time in the better place for the better of our people. We have the power now to say what peace should be. We have the voice that can scream at the thumb of our lungs that peace is in us. Now let that come out of you. Let it be seen and be heard by people who are unfamiliar with it. Let it flourish as it awakens once again. Humanity. While for I am blinded by the truth, still, I can hear the truth. I can hear you. That was a superb piece. Thank you, Ahmed. Adding really cannot be evaded. To conclude the event, we would like to call Miss Maria Maria Valsi Raffles, the chair of the Senior High School United Nations Day 2021 program. Good afternoon, everyone. Indeed, peace and order in the world is at the top of our hopes right now, especially in the trying times. Our hopes are high that this event will truly help our dear resilient students and those who are watching right now realize the importance of advocating for peace and being a part of the difference. On behalf of our JRU Senior High School Principal, Mr. Romel C. Navarro, in coordination with our Languages and Social Sciences Department Chair, Mrs. Carissa Ementeria, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude 
to our resource speaker, Ms. Carissa Chua, for sharing her insightful knowledge and expertise on traditions of peace and nonviolence. We would also like to thank our languages and social sciences teachers, Ms. Kanya, Mr. Estevez, and Mr. Jesus, for their immense support on this event. We would also like to acknowledge the HG Club with their advisor, Ms. Rabang, Mopansin Club and their advisor, Ms. Ignacio, the Tour Guiding Club and their advisor, Ms. Pastores, and Dulaang Rosaliano with their advisor, Ms. Jackson, for their invaluable efforts in making this event a success. We were also grateful for the support that our Marketing and Communications Office gave us to present and share the celebration with you through this Facebook live stream. Lastly, thank you to all the students, parents, alumni, and friends who have joined us in celebrating United Nations Day 2021. Again, thank you and peace to all.